بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک لیٹ اے سالو ندر ایگزامپل آف دا یوز آف دا ریوائزڈ نیوش لفٹنگ اکویشن دس ایگزامپل ریلیٹس ٹو لوڈنگ پنچ پریس ٹاک اینڈ اسٹیٹمنٹ آف دا ایگزامپل ریڈز ایز دا نارمل جاب آف اے پنچ پریس آپریٹر از ٹو فیڈ اسمال پارٹس ان ٹو اے پریس اینڈ ریموو دیم ونس پر شفٹ دا آپریٹر از ریکوائر ٹو لوڈ اے ہیوی ریل آف سپلائی اسٹاک فرام دا فلور ٹو دا مشین that is to a height of 160 cm as illustrated in the figure. The reel is 75 cm in diameter and weighs 20 kg. Assume that the operator lifts the reel in the sagittal plane or the medial plane in front of the body as shown and that to load the reel, the operator must exercise significant control at the destination of the lift. So this task is performed once per shift, so frequency is uh, once per shift. So if we assume eight hour shifts, then it will be equal to one over 480 lifts per minute because in the, in the table of the uh, multiplier for the frequency, the values are given for lifts per minute. And the height of the load at the destination is 160 centimeters. So this is 160. So from the floor to the center of the reel at the destination, uh, the height to which it is uh, to be lifted to is 160 centimeters. The diameter of the reel as shown is 75 centimeters and its weight is 20 kg. Assume that the operator lifts the reel in the sagittal plane. So he's lifting the reel right in front of the body. So angle of asymmetry, angle of asymmetry will be zero degrees. And that to load the reel, the operator must exercise significant control at the destination of the lift. So that means we have to calculate two RWL, one for region and the other for destination. So, Horizontal distance at the region is 57.5 centimeters. So that is 57.5. So that will actually be equal to the radius of the reel. So this would be equal to half of the diameter. So that is half of 75 centimeters. So that will be 37.5 centimeters. Plus this distance from the center of the body to the edge of the reel so that would be uh, 20 centimeters. So 20 plus 37.5 would be 57.5. So that is the distance from the center of the load uh, to the center of the uh, body of the person who is lifting the load. And this would remain the same at the destination as well. So this is 57.5 centimeters. So the Anchor location assumes steps forward with load, but the distance remains the same. V region is 38 centimeters. So that is equal to, actually almost equal to the uh, radius of the reel. So this would be, this distance would be 375 so what is given is 38 centimeters, but that is actually almost equal to the uh, radius of the reel. And as we have seen that V at the destination is 160. So at a region, the distance from the floor to the center of the load from where it is being gripped is 38 centimeters. And at the destination, uh, that is the distance from the floor to the center of the load at the a destination that is 160 centimeters. So these are the values we are given. And as I mentioned that uh, the frequency is one over 480 lifts per minute. That is much smaller than 0.2. That is the smallest value uh, that is given in the frequency table of the new uh, lifting equation. Now using these data, uh, let's solve the new equation and find the RWL and then lifting index. So first we will make calculations for region, this position from where the load is being lifted and then we will make the same calculations for the destination. So 
horizontal multiplier is equal to 25 over h and we are given that h is 57.5 at the region so horizontal multiplier turns out to be 0.43 the vertical multiplier is equal to 1 minus 0 0.003 mod v minus 75 so v at the region is 38 centimeters so vertical multiplier turns out to be 0.89 now we need to find the D. So D is equal to vertical height at the destination minus vertical height at a region. So that is 160 minus 38, so 122. So difference of this vertical distance and this. So from this center of the load at the region, to the center of the load at the destination. So that is 122 and we need this D to find the distance multiplier. The formula is 0.82 plus 4.5 over D. So D is 122. So distance multiplier turns out to be 0.86. Angle of asymmetry is zero degree. The load is being lifted right in front of the body. So that angle A is zero. So one minus 0 0.0032 A turns out to be one. Frequency multiplier, as we can refer to the table, is one because the frequency is smaller than the smallest value in the table, that is 0.2. So this is one because the load is being gifted just once per shift. So frequency is very small. And coupling based on observation is good. So the coupling multiplier is one. I hope you remember the equation for RWL. So that is load constant into the six multipliers that we just calculated and load constant is 23 kg. So 23 into 0.43 into 0.89 into 0.86 into 1 turns out to be 7.6 kg. That is the maximum load that should be lifted under given conditions. But the load that is being actually lifted is 20 kg. So lifting index that is equal to actual load being lifted under these conditions divided by recommended weight limit under these conditions. So 20 over 7.6 turns out to be 2.63. So that is a much larger value. So lifting index should be one. So the values greater than one pose a threat to the back injuries and the greater these values are, the more is the risk. So it is of course much larger than 1.0. So we have to see how we can reduce it but before that uh, let's solve uh, this equation for for destination so you might have already uh, uh, focused on this point might have got this point that only vm will change the horizontal multiplier will remain the same and same is true for the distance multiplier and the asymmetry frequency and coupling multiplier only the vertical multiplier will change at the region. Uh, the vertical distance was 38 and at the destination it is 160. So the vertical multiplier at the destination is uh, 0.75. It was 0.89 at the origin. So RWL at destination is 6.4 kg. So lifting index is 20 over 6.4. So that is 3.2. So that is a 3.2. Two, so that is even a larger. So we have to improve this task because it is very dangerous for this uh, operator and we have to come up with some solution. So the lifting index is quite high and the task cannot be described as safe. So in order to redesign the task and to make it safer, we should first examine the values of the multipliers. And let's list them in order from smallest to largest. And I hope you remember that the ideal value of these multipliers is one. The smaller the value is, the more it is contributing to the risk of back injury. So first we list these multipliers in ascending order at destination. So smallest multiplier uh, was horizontal multiplier. 0.43, VM 0.89, DM 0.86, and so on. 
So one possible solution seems to reduce the diameter of the rail to reduce edge, horizontal distance, so that horizontal multiplier is also reduced. And the more improvement actually we can make in the smallest multiplier, uh, the more improvement actually will lead to lifting index. Let us try the results with the real diameter reduced to 45 centimeters instead of 75 centimeters. That is a reduction of 40%. No, no, I would uh, encourage you to pause the video and uh, just figure out what will be the impact of this change. What will be the impact of reducing the diameter from 75 centimeters to 45 centimeters? Try to figure out yourself and then we will discuss. Okay, so one change of course will be uh, the change in the horizontal distance. So that will be 42.5 centimeters. So I will explain in the next slide how it will be 42.5. V origin will also change and that will be equal to almost the radius, so the new radius will be 22.5, so that is almost 23 centimeters. Now, what else will change? V destination will not change. V origin will change, the vertical distance at the origin will change, but it will not change at the destination. V destination will not change. Reducing the diameter of the reel will also reduce the weight of the reel. So that is obvious. And one point that is not mentioned here is that it will increase the frequency, but frequency was one over 480, now it will be two over 480 because now we may have to uh, load the reel twice a day instead of once a day, but that will, of course, will be much smaller than the minimum value of 0.2 lifts per minute. So as a whole, it will not impact the uh, frequency multiplier. These are the possible impacts of this change. So as I mentioned that D A will change as the V origin will change, so does the D change. So the vertical distance that is moved from origin to the destination now is 160 minus 23, so that is 137 centimeters. So I, I would like to explain the uh, changes that are resulting. So now the new diameter, this diameter is 45 centimeters, not the 75 centimeters. So radius will be equal to 22.5. This will be 22.5. And the distance from the edge of the reel to the center of the body was 20. So that will not change. So total H or the horizontal distance will be, uh, sorry, 42.5. So 22.5 uh, plus 20, it will be 42.5. And it will be the same at the destination as well. 42.5, this will be 42.5 centimeters. Now this V, at the region, the vertical distance at the region will be equal to radius, so that will be almost 23.0 uh, 23 centimeters. And this will not change. This vertical distance will remain the same because uh, the position of the center of this sort of rod to which uh, the reel is lifted will remain the same from the uh, floor. So this will remain the same. Frequency will increase from one to two lifts per for 80 minutes, but overall frequency multiplier will not change. So these are the changes uh, that were mentioned. And of course, once this V region has changed, so will D. So new D is 137 centimeters. And weight of this reel, we assume that 40% reduction in diameter has also resulted in 40% reduction in, in the weight. So the weight was originally, the actual load actually, we will use the same term. So actual load was 20 kg. 
So 40% reduction will result in 20 into 60% of this 20. So that will be uh, 12 kg. So actual load has reduced from 20 to 12 kg because of reduction in diameter. So the horizontal multiplier will increase because the new edge is 42.5 in, instead of 57.5. So new horizontal multiplier is 0.59. Now, what about vertical multiplier? It has slightly increased because we at the region, the vertical distance at the region was 38, now it is 23. So originally, this vertical multiplier was 0.89, if you remember. Now it has reduced to, it was 0.89, so it has reduced to 0.84. Similarly, the distance multiplier, uh, because of this, uh, change in D from 122 to 137 has slightly reduced as well. It was 0.86, now it is 0.85. So there is some decrease uh, in two multipliers. So that is not good uh, with respect to RWL, but let's see the cumulative impact of these changes. Asymmetry multiplier, that frequency multiplier and coupling multipliers will remain the same. So the new RWL at region turns out to be 9.7. So it has increased. So that is something good. Now the lifting index is actual load over RWL. So actual load has also reduced from 20 to 12 kg. New RWL is 9.7. So lifting index has reduced significantly from 2.63 to 1.24. Similarly, at the destination, all values, all multipliers will remain the same except for vertical multiplier. So as the uh, vertical distance is the same, so vertical multiplier will also be the same as was in the original case uh, when the diameter was 75 centimeters. So in that case, the vertical multiplier at destination was 0.75, so it is the same. Now, rest of the values are the same as above. So, uh, the distance multiplier is the same because horizontal distance, uh, sorry, this uh, D is the same. And horizontal multiplier is the same because H is the same. So, the RWL at the destination is 8.6. And lifting index turns out to be 12 over 8.6, 1.40. So uh, that has reduced from 3.12 to 1.40. So that is a significant uh, decrease as well. So you might have noticed that one change, the uh, change in the smallest variable that was contributing the most uh, to the reduction of RWL has uh, made this task much safer as a whole. And apparently, if we had not solved the Neosh equation and we had seen apparently that the person was performing the lift just once per day and the distance was, uh, say, around 60 centimeters and the load was also susceptible, it was 20 kg, so the task is quite safe. Once per day, a load of 20 kg is perfect. But once we solved the equation and saw the interaction of different multipliers together, this task turned out to be quite dangerous and we had to improve it. So I hope you have uh, got even better idea of the use of the NIOSH lifting equation to find the RWL lifting index and then uh, how we can actually improve the task to make it safer for the worker. Thank you.